Hey, come back here. Get your horse, Gabby. We've got to catch her. Not me. I'm too old to be chasing women. Roger. You saved my life. You really, really did. And, and as for you, I will never ride another step for you, you female Ben-Hur. I'll take that camera now. You could have handed it over without wearing out the horses. Okay, you win. Well, I'm sorry about this, but it's one thing to know something and another to prove it. Without these pictures, you know nothing. In fact, if your magazine printed a story about old Gabby Ben Wildcat Kelly without proof, you might have a big lawsuit on your hands. I see your point. I'm glad you do. I think I'll head back to the ranch and make sure that that Bible's in a safe place from now on. It's incredible. I want this investigated immediately. But, Governor, even if it is true, the statute of limitations will prevent us from prosecuting him now. For thefts of private funds, yes, but not of public money. And the state paid $50,000 for his apprehension. If this is Wildcat Kelly, then I'll gamble he collected his own reward. And that brings up the possibility of murder. For someone was buried in that grave at Twin Wells. Get started on it at once. Very well, sir. Well, I'll be a son of a gun. No wonder you knew so much about Wildcat Kelly. So that's the reason you wrote that song. And I always figured you were just a harmless old windbag. <laughs> I guess you had a right to do what you did, man, but I kind of wish you hadn't done it. Miss Ames, I reckon I underestimated you, and I apologize. Well, that's more like the old Western chivalry. I accept your apology. Here's something else for you to accept. Your closing bill. Gabby! Gabby! What happened? Wake up, Gabby! 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 Call a doctor and get the sheriff, boys.
Are you hurt, I hope? First you steal the Surrey, then the station wagon. Next, I suppose it'll be Trigger. Oh, shut up. Oh, thank goodness, here they are. Oh, dear Mr. Rogers, did you catch him? No, and you can ask her why. How's Gabby? I don't know. The doctor's still with him. There's a train leaving at midnight. I'll have one of the boys drive you in. I couldn't leave after what's happened. Oh, more news, huh? Believe it or not, Roy, I wasn't thinking about news this time. Do you think my story had anything to do with the shooting? What do you think? Well, I know it does look that way, but I'm awfully sorry. If there's anything I can do, I... How is he, Doc? Who, me? Gabby, are you all right? Sure, that bullet just parted my hair in a new place, that's all. Gee, this is sure a relief. How did you make out, Roy? Not so good. I got a look at the car, though. And Gabby saw the man. Just look, see, and they'll tell me he was a stranger here, Belts. I wonder why he had it in for you. Probably some guy he robbed. Oh, that fellow wasn't born when I was in the business. What's your thought, Sheriff? I'm afraid I haven't got any. I've got one. We'll spread it around that he missed Gabby, and when he comes back to take another crack at him, we'll grab him. Oh, no, you don't. He ain't gonna make no decoy out of me. We'll decoy him in another way. We'll give you a funeral, with all the trimmings. Another funeral? I spent more of my life dead than alive. Play this now? Yes. Remember, he's dead. Yes, but... Come in. The state investigators want to talk to Wildcat Kelly. I'm sorry, gentlemen. He just died. the state's case. It leaves us with nobody to prosecute. Prosecute? For what? For the murder of an unknown man, way back in 1910. The man that was buried under the name of Wildcat Kelly. There is a body in the grave, you know. But it would take a magician to identify him after all these years. Do you think Wildcat Kelly killed him? Well, he had to have somebody to bury in his place. But you can't hang a dead man, Sheriff. What's he mean there's a body in that there grave? I didn't kill nobody. Put a sack of sand in the casket. I helped roar it into the grave my own self. Looks like somebody's double-crossed you, Gabby. It sure does, unless Gabby's double-crossing us. Now, wait a minute. Listen, Ben, you don't think I killed a fella and stuck his body in that grave, do you? Well, somebody stole your sack of sand and left the corpse in its place. And they did a darn good job of making the corpse look like Wildcat Kelly for the state to pay a $50,000 reward. Now, listen, Gabby. If you're behind this, you've sure got me sticking my neck out. Mysteriously shot following the spread magazine story that he was Wildcat Kelly, Gabby Whitaker, an employee on the R-Bar R. Dude Ranch, staunchly maintained to his dying breath that he was not the famous outlaw. The body will lie in state in the ranch lodge room Tuesday afternoon between the hours of 2 and 3. So he denies he was Wildcat Kelly. Well, I want to know. You better take a look at that body. How do I look convincing? Not dead enough. Hand me the scorn storage. <laughs> no, I'm getting hay fever. Well, don't sneeze. You'll spoil everything. <laughs> Them damn green lilies. I never could stand them. That's better. How's it look, boys? Practically perfect. I bet he can fool an undertaker. Yeah, Gabby, you look better dead than alive. Oh, never mind your comical remarks. Let's get this darn thing over with. We're about ready. Now remember, keep your eyes closed and don't move. A lot depends on this. Get your places, boys. You're so anxious to take pictures. Get behind these flowers and take a picture of everybody who comes in, and don't miss. I can't do it, Roy. Well, I thought you wanted to help. I do want to help. With him lying there so close, I just can't. Well, snap out of it. It's time to let the folks in. There's the lamp. Fix it the way you want it. Oh. 
Showed up in any of these. Well, here's the last punch. If you don't find him in there, you certainly went to an awful lot of trouble. And scared me to death for nothing. No. No. Hey, Gabby, if this thing don't work out, I'll feel like turning in my badge. Maybe I'll have to turn in my badge after I get through helping you people play cops and robbers. No. 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 Hey, here he is. Are you sure? Are you sure? When a fella looks at you down a gun barrel, you ain't likely to forget. I had a hunch he'd show up. Now, let's find out who he is. Don't tell me he left his name and address. No, but the sheriff has a description of everyone who came and the car they came in. What have you got on this one, sheriff? Looks like he's about 36. He's got a gray suit on and a striped tie. Oh, here we are. Gray suit, striped tie. About 36 years old, came alone. License number 32S515. This is Sheriff Duncan. Give me the State Motor Vehicle Department. Yeah, you got it? Yeah. Now, how do you spell it? Yeah. At the what? Yeah, I got it. Thanks. His name is Cliff Anderson. He works and lives at the Westward Ho Club in Vallejas. Westwood Hall, here we come. Not we, just us. Oh, sounds like the brush off. I guess that's what you'd call it. Okay, I can take a hint. Here's your camera. Watch your hurry. Well, boys, don't think it hasn't been charming, because it hasn't. If you ever happen to come to the big city, look me up. Westford Ho, here we come. So we'll go over there and snoop around. I suppose we'll all wear long, false beards and get a job entertaining or something like that. Well, that's a general idea. Jack Gorley or Gorman. Jack Gordon, that's it. Let me have that phone. I'd like to put a long-distance call in to New York, to Mr. Jack Gordon. It's the Gordon Theatrical Agency. That's right. But, Roy, what chance will we have? He said we were good enough for the radio, didn't he? Well, we ought to be good enough for the Westward Ho. Bennett's place, huh? That shouldn't be too tough. Get me Bennett at the Westward Ho Club, the Lagos, right away, please. <laughs> Don't thank me, Roy. After the time I had out there last summer, I ought to put you on a nationwide hookup. Hold on, Roy. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hello, Bennett. Jack Gordon. Say, Ben, I got the greatest Western novelty you ever heard of. The Sons of the Pioneers. They're terrific. And I can get them for you wholesale. Every day along about evening when the sunlight's beginning to fade, I ride through the slumbering shadows along the Navajo Trail. When it's night and the crickets are calling and the coyotes are making a way, By a smoldering fire along the Navajo Trail. I love to lie and listen to the music when the wind is coming a St. Brush guitar. When over yonder hill the moon is climbing, it always finds me wishing on a star well what do you know it's morning already there's a dawn and so silver and pale it's time to climb into my saddle and ride the Navajo Trail it's time Climb into my saddle and ride the Navajo Trail. You sure do manage to get around, don't you? These legs of mine never fail me yet. Well, I can understand that, but I thought you were going back to the big city. I tried, but I'm just too darn curious to see how one of those bullets fired at Gabby will check with Anson's gun. How did you get the bullet? The same way you got it. I dug it out of the lobby wall at the ranch. Don't you ever tend to your own business? Not when everyone else is more interested. Besides, I think you should be more appreciative. I'll have the answer by morning. Mr. Anson is taking me to see the moonlight through the pines right after work. Sounds real romantic. Then I suppose while you have him under the spell of your beauty, you'll take the gun out of his holster, fire it into the ground, and get a sample bullet. You put it a little clumsily, but that's the general idea. Well, I don't like to spoil your snake charming act, but I've already found out that Anson carries a 38 and Gabby is shot with a 45. It sort of changes things, doesn't it? I'm afraid it does. Maybe he has the other gun in his room. That's what I intend to find out. I'll get a passkey and find out right now. Look, Tony, running this guy down is my party. I wish you'd stay out of it. Sorry, cowboy, but I have a personal interest in this look. I am baked. Ladies and gentlemen, our little photographer thinks she can sing. Would you all like to hear her? Remember this, that a kiss good night leads to another kiss. And a kiss good night with a hug real tight is nothing short of bliss. And a kiss good night leads to another kiss. It's an old custom for a boy and a girl to embrace in some do a turnabout thing, and so it just ain't right to kiss goodnight and stop at three or four, cause a kiss goodnight leads to a dozen
My guys, it's you. Okay, he's gone. Let's get out of here. Tony, wake up. Wake up, Tony. Wake up. I'm sorry I socked you, but it's only for your own good. Wake up. You're sure a pest, Tony. And I'll be darned if I know how a little jughead like you can be so nice sometimes. One minute I want to take a poke at that pretty little face of yours, and the next minute I... This is the next minute. Why didn't you do that in the first place? That's a sure way to keep it quiet. Why, you little... If you'd have kept that pretty little face of yours back in the big city, none of this would have happened. You're telling me. 